Hi Floss Tube, welcome to Snickerdoodle Stitch. My name is Kathleen and this is a channel about cross stitch. If you've been here before, thanks for visiting again. And if you're new, welcome. I have a lot of stitching to show this time. I have two FFOs, I have some other stitching, and then I dabbled a little bit more with fabric dyeing. And I have a tiny, tiny bit of haul, just a couple things to show. So, um, yeah, I'll try to get through this. I'm probably gonna have to stop and take some drinks because nothing seems to be quenching my thirst. It is hot here. It's in the low 90s, but the humidity is 69%, so it feels like a sauna. I'm not a fan of summer. I prefer winter over summer any day, even as a kid. Um, it just, it's that kind of sticky where you get out of the shower and you never really feel like you dry, and this is with AC running all the time. Um, it's just miserable right now, so I'm really looking forward to Alaska. I looked at the temperature there in Sitka and it's only 55 this week. That's the high. Um, so I'm excited about that in August. I will have definitely had it with summer by then. We've only had a few weeks of this kind of heat, um, but this week it's pretty oppressive. So anyway, I probably will have to stop to take drinks a couple times. But let's dive into the stitching that I have finished. Um, <clears throat> first, a shout out to a couple of my viewers. I showed these pins uh, in my last video. I used them to attach the little teeny tiny embroidery piece on the stitcher cap from Cotton Pixels. And they're these cute little pins, if I figure out how to open this thing, that look like, like uh, let me find a color that will show up. They're shaped like this. Uh, okay, maybe here, I'll hold it up against my shirt. It'll show up that way. They're shaped like this, and one person said they're called light bulb pins. That makes perfect sense. It is shaped like a light bulb. And someone else called them uh, coilless safety pins. And they reminded me that pins like that are used for markers for knitters. And once I read that, I was like, oh yeah, I have seen them in the knitting, knitting um, aisle, like in Hobby Lobby and places. Although I think they're usually plastic. These are actually metal. Um, like safety pin kind of metal in all different colors in the set that I have. Um, but yeah, thanks for reminding me what these are used for so that I could share that. So now I'm gonna dive into the stitching. I had started this previously. It's I Would Rather Be Stitching by Primrose Cottage Stitches. And this is the pattern. And it would finish, like if you did it on 16 or 32 count, it's a little under three inches by seven inches. Um, so I wanted to stitch this for a small. I thought with the stitching theme, it was appropriate and I really wanted to stitch this, but I supersized it. So I'm hoping I didn't break the rules too much. I know part of the reason they say the small should be five by five is just so that everybody's kind of putting in the same amount of stitching effort meaning, you know, one person isn't coming with a little teeny tiny, I don't know, snowflake Christmas ornament with 50 stitches and the next person is bringing in a mirabilia. I mean, it's just to kind of keep things on a level playing field. So I did make this for a smalls exchange. I'm a little nervous about getting it though, but I supersized it. So I did it on cork, which is 16 count, and I did it four over two, and here it is all finished. I did it in all of the called for, it's DMC, and I finished it as a tote bag. So um, this line of fabric is Deb Strain is the designer, Moda is the um, fabric manufacturer that puts it out, and it's called um, Honey and Lavender, I think it's something in Lavender, it's Deb Strain. And she has a couple B um lines that she's put out with these similar colors i did a quilt for my dad several years ago for his birthday in the line that was out that year this is a newer one but um the inside is yellow with little honeybees oh i forgot people want it held closer <clears throat> so there it is supersized I have a tote bag that I made for myself where I supersize Project Quarantine from With I Needle and Thread. I've shown it before and I always get lots of comments on it. So I thought I would do that for my smalls exchange. So this is going to be my small. It's 
it's not very small. So like I said, I'm hoping I don't get in trouble for breaking the rules. But this piece, you know, as design, the designer intended it to be small. I have just made it jumbo. But really happy with that. I did use soft and stable in in the bag instead of batting and that's why it has the body and will stay standing up. I only quilted it in vertical lines. So soft and stable will bend or flop um, anywhere that it's stitched. So it had, the bag has a lot of give this way. I've, I've got some big things of yarn in there so it's not really smooshing, but it will give this way, but it will stay standing up. And that's what I wanted it to do. <clears throat> so like mine, I'll take to retreat, I'll prop it against my chair and it just stays standing there or I'll hang it over the chair. Um, you know, like we did in school with our pocketbooks back in the day. Um, but yeah, I did stitch a little bit of lace around the top. Um, that's twofold. One, just decorative. I think it makes it look cute. But also when I turn the bag inside out and I do the top stitching, this one didn't really do it like the one that I made for myself, but it ruffled just a tiny bit. And the lace on the top helps disguise that. But that's my finished. I would rather be stitching. I almost hate to give it away, but I don't need another bag. And it was intended for a small 16. So that's what I'll be doing with that. So that's my first finish. My second finish is Be Happy. And this was from Just Cross Stitch, um, August, 2023. And this was the pattern, the design. And this was a quick stitch, so I started it and then actually finished it. And here it is all finished. I'll hold it up closer if I can get it right side up. I've got three little pins in there. I have the honeybee is from, let me hold it this way so you can see the pins. The honeybee is from just pins. And then the little um, flower and ladybug are Pantini Pantini from a different set. The set with the flower and the ladybug had a carrot in it. Um, and the just pin set, it was just five of the bees and I've used the bees and a couple other things. Um, so I, I finished it this way. It is in, that is actually a, um, a candle holder for a pillar candle and it's from Hobby Lobby. So I'm sure I got it when it was 50% off. So it was 250 and it is the perfect size. I like looking for pillar candle holders to put round things in. And um, the challenge is, is that a standard pillar is three inches wide. And so a lot of times they're, they're just not wide enough in di diameter for me to have a lot of them. Most of the round things seem to finish around four or four and a half inches. Um, but this was wide enough. And so I bought it at Hobby Lobby. Is This is smooshy. And I'll tell you my hack for that. So I made a pin cushion not too long ago um, to put in a tart tin. And I did it the way hands-on design shows doing it, which is, you know, pulling your um, polyfill, fluffing it up by pulling it, um, kind of putting it in. So you've got your, your stitched piece. You've done a running stitch around and then started gathering it so it kind of looks like a shower cap, if any of your mothers wore shower caps back in the day. Um, so it kind of looks like a shower cap and you put your polyfill in and then you maneuver your, um, uh, like a round piece of cardboard in there and then pull your running stitch so that it will gather around it. The t I had a couple challenges with that. For it to get enough polyfill in there that I like the poofiness it was really unmanageable. Like it just kept wanting to pop out different directions um, or I would get it in there. I would pull my stitch to, you know, to gather it around the cardboard and it would have a lump on one side. It just was really difficult to manage. I thought like I needed six hands or something. I don't know. I don't even know that more hands would help because you're dealing with this tiny little thing too. So I had the idea for this one. So this is what soft and stable looks like that I used for the bag. It, it's a, it's, it's not a batting. Um, I don't know, maybe you'd call it an interfacing. 
it's foam and then it's lined with fabric on both sides. So you can see it, it's, um, you know, it's foam, it bends, but it stands up. So it's used for bag making. It, Soft and Stable is made by Annie's. There's a couple other brands. Pellon makes one that's kind of similar. And Bozel is another brand that's popular. I prefer Soft and Stable, and I bought a case of it from Craftsy years ago that I'm still working my way through. Um, but I had used it for the bag, and I had some little pieces like this left. And it is, it is a pricey um, product, so I'll keep the small pieces even just to make change purses, you know, something this size out of it. Um, so when I went to start finishing this, I thought, you know what? I wonder if I could just glue some batting down on the cardboard and that way it's all affixed. I'm not having to try and hold polyfill in while I'm doing anything. Um, I'm not trying to keep anything smooth. So what I did, I cut my piece of cardboard the size that I wanted. Um, and then I cut two circles of soft and stable and two circles of wool batting. So wool batting is poofier. Um, it's, it's, it, it's poofy like a polyester batting. It's not like a cotton batting. So cotton batting, um, the way it's scrimmed, it, it has nice drape but it, it's kind of thin, it, it's not puffy. But your polyester batting is puffy and wool batting is puffy. And I had some scraps of wool batting. So I glued two circles of this down and then two circles of wool batting on top. And then I did my, you know, drawstring pulling around and I am so happy with the results. Much, much, much happier than I was with the polyfill one that I attempted a few months ago. Um, it is a little bit firm, but it's kind of nice because it holds the pins in. The polyfill, to get it poofy and thick enough that it would really hold the pins nicely, then it became unmanageable or really just didn't even fit. Um, but if I put less than that in there, then the pins didn't, didn't hold very well. The soft and stable is a little firm, firmer than batting would be. So the pins like really stay in here. They're not going anywhere. I mean, they come in and out really easily. I won't, it's not like I'll be taking them in and out. I won't use this as a pin cushion that, you know, I use next to my sewing machine or anything because I don't want to mess my stitching up. But that is my hack for doing a pin cushion. It's just gluing down some batting instead of fooling with polyfill. And then I just glued it in this um, candle base and then glued some chenille dots in there. They were actually kind of a bright orangish red and I didn't like them. And so I over dyed them a little deeper, but that's my finished piece. And I love that piece. And I've been getting just cross stitch for about two years now, maybe just one year. Um, and I've marked a couple pages, but I haven't stitched anything from any of the magazines and my subscription is coming due. And I debated not renewing it um, for a couple reasons. Every now and then there's a pattern in there that I love. Um, but usually I kind of flip through and nothing really catches my eye that I'm definitely going to stitch. With the exception of in like the Halloween or the Christmas issues. But I could just buy those two issues in the, in the store or order them online or whatever. Um... And then their patterns are very heavy with backstitching. A lot of the patterns still have a lot of backstitching and the way they chart them for the magazine, they'll have each backstitching, um, each color of floss in a different color line. And so the charts just kind of become jumbled to me. Um, and my other pet peeve, so anyone that's been stitching for a long time knows that normally if there's white floss in the pattern, it is just a little tiny dot in the square, right? That's the common symbol for white is the white dot and black is usually a little solid black square. In the Just Cross Stitch magazine, um, that was not the case. And I, and I looked through some other patterns because I thought maybe it was just this one, that maybe it was the designer. 
but it seems to be the um, pattern standard. So white was a diamond. The little dot was actually black. So the single little dot in the square that normally would be white is black. And all of the white on here was a little diamond shape. If you can see the white, there's quite a bit of white on this. Um, well, that kept throwing me because I'm trained so many years of stitching that those are two symbols that are pretty consistent designer to designer. It's almost just like a standard and just cross stitch doesn't follow that standard. Um, so anyway, enough about that piece and my griping about um, symbols used. Last time I mentioned I had lost this pattern for the Jardin Privé, ABC de la Bourdeuse. So I thought I knew where it was. It wasn't there. My house is very neat. Um, I do have a lot of craft stuff. I have a lot of crafting hobbies with quilting and stamping and cross stitching and, but everything has its place. Um, and my mind usually knows where I put something, even with all of the supplies that I have. I could not find this darn pattern. Um, then I went to finish the super size small, the Primrose Cottage Stitches, a couple days after my last video, and I couldn't find this pattern. I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. It wasn't in the project bag where it should have been with that project. And I thought, I, this is ridiculous. I cannot have lost two patterns. So then it dawned on me, wait a minute, the only time those two patterns would have been pulled out together was to film a floss tube. So I went in the other room and I had the stack of dyed fabric that I had shown, I think two floss tubes ago. Um, and sure enough, both patterns were stuck in there. So they, they were still, it was a pile, this bed um, in the daytime is behind me when I'm on camera for work. And I had picked up the stuff from here and put it in the spare room that's next door so that it wasn't all oh, this bed can look a mess by the time I'm done filming. Um, and I had quickly moved it so that it wasn't back there when I started my work day and the patterns were still in there. So I located my ABC de la Brodeuse and I stitched another um, scroll width. That's kind of my goal, I think, each two weeks is to get one width of this stitch. So, I had this uh, needlepoint words and I had this banner, although not the bottom of it. So everything else that's on here, I stitched. This is on, I think 28 count, it's banding, um, which I'm again, very excited to have because it's from Germany and this company is going out of business after 500 years. Um, and I had so much fun, this is all backstitch, but I had so much fun stitching this uh, hoop with the fabric in it. So my goal is to keep advancing this. I don't wanna look at it until it's all done. Um, so my goal is to keep advancing this and stitching a segment. I think I have, um, I'm done like three and a half out of five pages. So I think I figured if I stitched this much every two weeks, I will be done September-ish. Um, this won't go with me to Portland and Alaska just because it's too bulky and heavy to pack. One thing you might have noticed, you see this um, batting over here. So this banding, this is going to be a really long piece. It's 40 some inches long when it's finished and I'm, I'm pretty, I'm over like two thirds of the way through. Um, because you've got all this stitching in the middle, when you roll it, it will start to distort just because this is now thicker here because of all the stitching than over here. And so it starts to distort a bit. You can probably see it um, on this side with the Quaker. See how it's pulling down? Um, and so I take some narrow strips of batting and just roll them into here just to even that out and reduce that distortion. It still happens a little bit, but I like my fabric pretty tight and that's part of it too, is just how tight I have it pulled. But 
I'm loving this. It is all stitched and it has called for colors except for the two reds. The pattern calls for two pinks, I think 223, 224. Um, the 220 series of pinks along with these blues, which are like the 926. 926 something like that 930 maybe um i've got the pattern right here uh 926 so those blues and those pinks make me think to 1980s it's very much the dusty rose and williamsburg blue that were big in the mid to late 80s um and I love red. So I swapped out for two different reds. So everywhere it calls for light pink, I'm using 321. And everywhere it's calling for the dark pink, I'm using uh, 816. So that's the only change I made. Everything else um, is as charted. And I can't even really claim that idea for my of my own. Um, on the Jardin Privé website, if you look at this pattern on their website, they have some pictures of other people's pieces that they had done and someone had done this with the reds instead of the pinks. They had a couple other changes in theirs too. Um, and I tried jumping, they gave the link to the, the person's site or Facebook, Instagram, something, blog maybe. And I tried going there to see if they listed their full color conversion, but I couldn't even find this piece on their site. So they've, uh, cleaned up and removed it at some point but so I'm gonna keep working on that one and now I've got a start two starts oh no this isn't a start this is another whip you saw this before um Madame Chantilly on the beach I started this one also a couple times ago I want to take this to Stitch New Jersey um because it's a lot of just block like this this late house is just going to be a lot of solid stitching not a lot of counting and so it's going to be easy for me to stitch, you know, with every talking and everybody thing going on around me. Um, but I wanted, I really would like to finish this this summer. I don't want it to be another whip carrying into next year. And it was stitching up pretty fast. So I had started and just done the white scrolly bottom, which is like the, you know, it's supposed to be like the sand dunes. Sorry, it's not focusing very well so that you can see that. Um, and then I was doing some things like the umbrella poles, just some things so that a lot of the heavy duty counting was done. <clears throat> and I did the little girl and the little boy in their bathing suits. But I decided it was gonna be a little bit more all these little cabanas than I would probably get done at Stitch New Jersey. So I wanted to stitch on this a little bit more. Um, so I did, and I got about a third done. I've got this side done. Um, a little plane up here their little banner that the plane is um pulling says holidays and i'm gonna make it say rehoboth rehoboth is a beach here in delaware and it's a beach that i grew up going to it's very close to where i i lived where my dad still lives um and these sticks these are just their umbrella poles so at this point, I just have a lot of um, kind of block things left to stitch. The fabric, the color's actually showing up really well tonight, is Manny Di Donna, and I think it was just called something like yellow and blue, orange and blue, orange and blue. Um, but it has a very beachy look to it. It looks in person not quite as orange. It looks a little more sand-like, and then the blue. So I'm really happy with the fabric. I did make one change. Um, I started stitching the critters down here, and I'm not stitching my crabs red. So um, we have Maryland blue crabs here and they turn red when they're cooked. So it always makes me a little crazy to see red crabs in beach scenes because red means they're cooked, they're ready to eat. So I did make him blue. And then um, this dark color here and it's over in this umbrella so Madame Chantilly typically calls just for DMC. This one is all DMC except for that dark color. And it was a floss that I had never heard of. It was Onyx Atelier, maybe? I had to Google it. And when it came up, it's an over-dyed floss that's available in France. So can't get it here. So I just rated, this is um, Cousin It from Roxy Flusco. 
is what I, I'm using for the dark one. It's a little bit, it's a green, a dark, dark, I don't think I can get the color to show up. It's a dark, dark, dark green, um, like darker than my shirt, obviously. Um, not as gray as what it called for, but it's not used anywhere that has to be gray. So that was just in my stash what I had that I thought was going to work the best. So that's what I went with. So you will see this again next time because next time I will have been to Stitch New Jersey. I can't believe it's only a week from now. It feels like, you know, forever when it, when it, and like, you know, when we left last year and it's like, oh, we won't be here again for another whole year. And now a year's gone. I'm not sure how it's the middle of July already because I'm sure it's still May. Okay, this next one is a start and this is a Lily Violette Estat Omer. Um, and that's the pattern and I love those little retro girls. And of course I have a few changes I'm gonna do on this. I am not gonna stitch the boats and the seagull on the top of the clothesline. I'm not sure what those little boats are out there. Like I love the piece, but then the boats bug me. Um, and then I haven't decided about the flowers that are up here in the clothesline. One is by the boats and one is on top of the red uh, bathing suit there. Those little like sprigs of flowers that are up there. I'm gonna stitch it first just with the bathing suits. And then if it looks too empty, I'll put those flower sprigs in, but I'm thinking I'm going to like it just with the bathing suits. It's all DMC. Gotta love the European designers who almost always use just DMC and still get fantastic results. And this is what I have done. So I have one of the little girls and I've started the second one and I have the whole grass. This part over here will be the hillside with the lighthouse. On the right side here. Hold it up close so you can see what I have done. Um, there is back stitch, so you can probably see around her yellow. Um, there's just it's kind of just like a hint of back stitching, like highlighting. They did have her legs also back stitched in black, and that was I decided not to do that. Um, so we can, this was really just like a night and a half of stitching. So it goes, it's going pretty fast. It's a lot of counting, but it's a lot of sections that are all in one color. So you don't have to keep switching out colors. You can load a long piece of floss and stitch quite a bit before you got to, before you got to go to a different color or reload that same color. Um, this would be a good, uh, this stitching doesn't look very neat. Um, this would be a good, another good retreat piece. This is on 32 count weathered stone from Atomic Ranch. And it's going to be a tight fit, but this was a piece that was left over from something else. And um, I like the colors against this, so I just decided to stitch it on there even though it's gonna be a tight fit. It's okay. All right, my last, my, oh, my last cross stitching. I have other stitching to show. I, wanting to play some more with my case creation stand. Um, I'm still loving it. My only complaint, and it's not with the stand, it's really with my sofa. The arm on my love seat where I st sit to stitch, the arm, is a little bit high, not, not real high. It's high enough that when the bar from the stand, cause I have this, the stand is off to the side and then the bar comes across. Um, I need the bar to be like an inch or inch and a half lower, but it can't go lower because of the arm of the love seat. So I'm just dealing with it for now and trying to decide if I want to rearrange the living room to put the recliner back on that side of the living room. It doesn't really organize as well that way. So do I want, uh, you know, form over function? 
that's what I'm, I'm toying with now. So for now, I've, I'm just been kind of con continuing to play with it. Um, the Mirabilius and the scroll rod, the other two pieces that I show I had in Q snaps. Um, the Q snaps do slip a little bit, um, when they're in the, the clamp. And it may just be that I'm not clamping it tight enough. I think what I may try is putting a piece of like non-skid carpet, you know, that, that rubbery kind of stuff that you can put under a throw rug so the throw rug doesn't slide. I think I'm gonna cut a little piece of that and try wrapping that around when I clamp it in. I think that will keep it from slipping and solve that problem. It doesn't slip bad enough that it's unusable. It's probably just annoying more than anything. Um, but I think that might solve that problem. But anyway, Princess Eliana. Last time you saw this, I had this yellow part down here done and the purple underneath. And what I did this time, you see this dark band on the edge here? And then there's also a dark band that comes in up through here. This is really hard going backwards. And that's what I stitched. And it's not gonna look like much. Oops, one moment please. I've got a little tangle happening with my flosses for this. And then I've dropped them. Um, this is on fabric by Stephanie Ocean Tide. As I drop it. Sorry, but I had to cover my piece. So what I did was all this, all of this dark, brown and it doesn't look like much but it's almost 2,000 stitches so it's a lot um and I'm almost done that dark brown and now I get to start on the greens Oops, so I'm excited about that um because yeah ne next up above there you can actually see the color better further back next up above are all of the greens that come into play I am still questioning my sanity a bit for picking this bright ocean tide um, but what I dropped earlier, I carried in, this is most of the flosses. There's a couple purples that aren't in here. Um, this is the colors of floss for it. And I just decided to lean into the bright. And so that's why, um, and I did use the fabric viewer. It's a, it's a website where you could test different fabrics. And I did use it for this. This is all of the um, 1 to 34, I think, the newer colors. And then there's a whole bunch of other colors. And there's a couple purples that I know aren't in here because I never put them back after I stitched all this purple on the bottom. But those are the colors and where I'm at. So that's my dark gray. I'm not sure when this is going to get stitched on next. Um, This weekend, I'm not sure how much stitching I'm going to get done, and next weekend is Stitch New Jersey, and that's not going with me there. All right, um, I'm trying to figure out how to unbury stuff to show you things in the water. I should have, I've got too many big things this week. Everything's a little unwieldy. So the other thing I worked on was project bags. I got a big stack here. Oh, those are my little tags that say snickerdoodle stitch. So I had told Arlene that I would donate some bags for the raffle. And so I have three bags for that. I did this one. I did this one. And I got little um, zipper pulls on them. And I did a beach one. So I've got three bags for her for the raffle. And then I have a whole stack of more like each of these. And I think I'm gonna use them for table gifts at a retreat. I mean, it's more than I need for table gifts, but um, I don't know. It's like 25 project bags. I went a little crazy cutting them out and making them. So those were fun. Then, I've got a couple, I've got a fabric dilemma here. So I was gonna get your opinion on this. I had, by the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. So 
Normally for Halloween, I'm all about the cute. I'm not really about the like goth spooky, but I love Macbeth and that's what this is from. It's Macbeth, I don't know, Act 4, I think. Um, and it's the witches in the play that are, that are chanting this around the cauldron in the one scene. <clears throat> and so I saw this one stitched up. It's not very big. It's maybe six by 10, something like that. It's fairly small. And then more recently, I saw that La Di Da also has Double Double Toil and Trouble, Fire Burn and Cauldron Bubble, which is the end. This is the beginning. This is the end, I think, of that same, same scene. Um, so here's my dilemma. I had picked up Weeks Dye Works Scoopernog to do Scuppernog. Scuppernog? Scuppernog. Scuppernog. What the heck is Scuppernong? I gotta Google that. Um, I had picked this up to do this on, but I really would like to do them on the same fabric, maybe even as one piece. But the witch's nose is this color, and I, I don't know if it's gonna show up enough. So that's my dilemma, and I'm trying to decide, do I do it on this? either as one piece or as two. Do I continue with this fabric choice? Is the green going to show up enough? It might. It, it is lighter. It doesn't clash. Um, my other thought was possibly just doing the saying and the witch, both sayings and the witch's shoe and not doing the witch's nose. So, sorry, there's glare. Just doing the shoe and then just working the words in, I would have to, well, they are the same size. So um, same number of stitches. So I wouldn't have to like rechart or anything. I would just put the words in down below. Sorry, I'm getting one thing turned one direction and the other one turned the other direction. My other possibility, and this is where I want opinions, I could continue with Scuppernog or I showed last time, no, a couple times ago, the Ada that I had dyed for Halloween Quaker from Lila's Studio. And this one I rejected because it got these black spots on it, which made me a little crazy. So this is the one that I was going to use for that piece. So there's threads and stuff hanging on it. Um, this is the one I was going to use for the Lila Studio Halloween Quaker, and I could do the two, um, do these on blue. So the witch's nose is going to show up pretty bright. Um, would give them a little bit different look and feel. So, do I stick with the scuppernong? Do I do it on the blue or do I go to a plan C, which by the time I get around to stitching these could be a possibility. So that, that I wanted to see what people thought about that. I gotta put this where I'm not gonna lose it. Let me just, no, I'll deal with that later. Sorry folks. Um, All right, I have a cup. I have one more thing to show. I think just one. Yeah, well, one pile. Um, I played around with dyeing fabric some more. So when I showed the fabric I had dyed last time, some of it I didn't like. I was using tie dye dye, so from a tie dye kit designed for kids. But I've actually found that I really like it. It's economical. You get a lot of colors in one set. Um, you can buy it at the end of summer. Time's coming up where they're going to start discounting all that stuff because they got to make room for Christmas, which Hobby Lobby is already putting out. Um, and it doesn't wash out. So it, it's very water fast. It just, the water runs perfectly clear once you iron it. It is not coming out. So someone had suggested rinsing it out, but rinsing doesn't do anything. So then someone had mentioned dyeing fabric with beet juice and I had just made pickle beets or I would have 
if I had not just made them, I'd have broken out the cans of beets and, and played with that. But I decided to take some writ dye and do some over dyeing and dye them deeper, darker colors. I do like the tie dye for very pale colors. Um, you know, if you want a pale yellow, pale pink, pale blue, um, they do really nicely with light color, doing pale colors. The more intense colors, what I found was as it dried, the water any moisture would settle down and it kind of left the dye lying on top. So I got really harsh lines, which I didn't like. So I decided to just over dye them and make them darker. And I have some pieces now that I love. And the one thing I'm most excited about, I'll show it first. Um, is, don't drop things. I've, I've got, I did a couple pieces of them, is this one. And this is Ada dyed that way. And this is the piece that I loved. Because those, those first two, I kind of learned what I, the effect that I wanted to do. This came out very close to Fox and Rabbit flannel flower which has become one of my favorite um, fabrics. So it's sort of a cream color, but the light marbling on it is gray. So it's got some gray cast to it. And I, I, I lean toward cool tones, which I'm sure anybody who's watched me can tell. So I really like the gray marbling in there. And I got it almost exactly like flannel flower. The flannel flower, the, the cream color has a bit more of a pink cast to it than this. This was just cream linen, um, just plain cream. And then it's just got a tiny bit of gray in there. It's not a streak, there's like a streak showing up on camera the, up near the top, which isn't here in person. Um, but yeah, so I'm really happy with that. And then, so that was not what I was supposed to be doing because I was supposed to be over dyeing my disasters that I wasn't happy with. Only then I got a little carried away with the writ dye and I got the gray out and that's how then I started that. This one is a gray on white. So it is a true gray. I'm really liking this piece too. I know that these creams in this gray will get pulled out or something once I get them in my stash well, where I'll see them. Um, this next one, I had Botanical B. It was one of the few patterns that I bought for market this year from Hands On Design. I love that pattern and I have the flosses. In fact, these came in an order from one, two, three stitch. And I was like, oh, those colors are so pretty. What is that for? Because of course I ordered stuff and then can't remember what the floss was supposed to be for. Only when I looked at the colors, I thought, mm, that looks very hands-on design. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I ordered floss for the bee. So what I'm excited about, one of my redos is this. And it's almost identical to the fabric that's on the, on the pattern. And it's not a fabric that I normally, or a color that I normally would, um, Um, I don't usually use dark or bright colors, but I love these flosses on this. And this is Ada. Um, so this may go to a retreat or to Alaska because this would be very small to pack for either of those. And I can see this even in here in kind of low evening light, um, without any magnification. So good travel piece for me. So I was happy with that. And then I'm not going to show you these stupid little scraps. These were, these were little scraps that I was testing on. You can still see some of the ugly um, streaking that I had. These are, these are pieces that have been cut up that I actually had stitching on them. So these were truly just test pieces. And I'm not even sure. I'm going to keep these, although this green could work for some Christmas ornaments or something. I need to learn to throw stuff away. 
Um, the B fabric, I actually did multiple, I kept adding more dye and making them darker and darker and darker. And so the one that I have for the B is the darkest of the three. This is the medium one and this is the lightest one. And these were all Ada. Some kind of Ada scraps. Yeah, this I had tested stitching on for something and then must not have liked the coverage. So I did those. Um, these were supposed to be kind of a different dark green than they are. They came out they're looking a little more gray on camera. Um, the color on the bottle looked more like my shirt. And I'm not sure if I added more dye if I would get that color or not. And then this one actually has some yellow spots in it. I think I think this one might have been some green and I added a little bit of yellow just playing around. I got very mad scientists with the bottles of, uh, here's another um, teal color. All right, these ones I loved. No idea what I'm gonna do with them. Something for uh, Valentine's Day. So again, I, I'll i start with the latest one. It's really obvious the streaks that I wasn't happy with and then I dyed the whole piece that's darker pink. And so now those streaks, I'm not crazy about them still, but they don't bother me as much as they did. I was ready to throw it away and now I would use it for something even though that's heavier streaking than what I typically like. I mean, I could always just use this half over here. So that's the latest one. And then this is the next one. Ooh, that looks bright on camera. It's a little more, it's a little more melony than what it's showing up. Not as hot pink, more melon. Um, this is the same thing. Again, it should be more melon looking, but this is uh, either Brittany or Lugana. It's not linen. The last two were linen. And then this is the darkest one. This one is linen. I got a little carried away because I liked that color. It was so pretty. Again, it's, well... Okay, this one is maybe showing up a little more true. It's not hot pink at all. Um, so it's still not quite right with the color. <clears throat> but it's much darker. And then... This one was some kind of yellow disaster. I don't remember what was wrong with this. So that one, that one, um, I over dyed again and it's just come out a soft butter yellow. And then this one, the dye color is actually marigold. And this one I got out a piece of undyed Ada to try it on. And how cool would that be for a fall piece? I mean, fall leaves aren't going to show up on it, but I have some fall things that are, um, just black, like silhouettes. Like there's that Jardin Privé and it's got, it's, it's on the cover, it's all done in black. It's like a little witch and then there's like some Quaker looking things around it. Um, and then on the back, it's done in two different colors. I think it's done in orange and black. Someone at Needlework Extravaganza in New Jersey earlier this spring was doing it with gray and black and it looked really cool with the two colors. But that would be pretty on here if it would fit. Now I'm even wondering, I don't remember what size I need for the la-di-da, the, the something like it this way comes and uh, they might fit on here, but I'm loving this one and it, it's marigold writ dye. It looks like I got a little green on it on the back, but it's on the other side. I've got a couple green spots up here, <coughs> but um, there's spots that are showing up kind of pink on camera and then there's no pink in this. I have tried different lighting. I mean, I do photography as a hobby and I, I just don't know what the iPhone does with color. All right, and then these two were just a couple 
Oh, I do know what these are. This is just another gray and a darker color. And I do use a lot of gray. I like gray even for winter things, like with um, snowflakes, the, the white I think shows up really well on a darker gray. And like I have the little dove one, I can't think of the name of it, home for Christmas maybe. And red really pops on it, so I, I like grays. And then this one, if you look on this side, it's just blue, kind of like clouds. On this side, do you see like the kind of streaky? This was a piece of one of the smoky, vintage smoky. It's the same, it's the same as like vintage, vintage country mocha, but it, it's vintage smoky, I think. And so there's some gray streaking on white and I over dyed it with blue. Um, it doesn't really show up and honestly, it kind of just looks like I've gotten my fabric dirty. So I probably will use this side. This would be nice for a summer piece to look like sky. I was trying to see if I could get something close to fabric by Stephanie on uh, Nantucket Sky, which I've done a few things in. Um, I did see that she's going to be at Stitching in the Wild again this year. So I'm keeping that on my shopping list for then because I did love stitching on that. Um, it was Lugana and I probably will buy Lugana again. The, the color of course is different on the Lugana than it is on the linen. I like the way it looks on the Lugana. So I'm probably just going to buy some more from her, but this is pretty close color wise. It's more just my, my white spots are a little more, um, leopardy looking than what her fabric comes out. So that was the last, that's the last of my fabric dyeing experiments. I've put all this stuff away. I took it to the basement to, um, stop having the temptation to dye anything else. And honestly, I ran out of scraps of fabric and stuff. The vintage, that actually that's not true because I bought a bunch on clearance at Hobby Lobby that vintage smoky was one that Hobby Lobby was selling on clearance so it was like a dollar so that was what I used uh, I wanted to see what would happen if I over dyed it with some blue and I'm, I'm again not crazy about it all right I'm getting close to running out of time here a little bit of stash not too much just a couple things I got another Madame Chantilly. This one is called Halloween Party. And how cute is that little witch with the crazy hair? This would be one that would be easy to do a skin tone conversion in too. I think for this one, I am likely just gonna stitch the witch and these two cats and maybe this cat. I'm probably not gonna do the um, ghosts. I don't like crows. I could maybe do the pumpkin, but if I do just the witch and the two cats, it would give me a skinny, tall thing. And I have some really good finishing pieces for Halloween stuff that are skinny and tall. So that's kind of what I'm thinking with that one. But I just thought she was too cute. Um, I don't remember now where I saw her. Why I... Uh, I was buying something else and then spotted this. I don't know. Um, all right. And then the last thing that I bought, this is from Petal Pushers. It's called Nibblers. I'm going to take it out, get it out of the plastic because it's tiny. The stitch part that's showing is tiny because they're showing it in this whole frame. So I don't know if you can see, but in the strawberries, there are little teeny tiny mice peeking out of some of the strawberries. And they're on this frame that's painted pink that has, that's the mouse. And the wood mouse piece is from Oh, Scarlet Sky Designs. They are an um, I think they were Etsy. I can't remember if they were Etsy or if they had a website. I just searched Scarlet Sky Designs and it came up. Um, but like, here's a little mouse right there. And there's one right here. And there's one kind of peeking around the corner right there. 
some really cute little mice in that one. And so I did order the wood piece and the wood piece just arrived. I got them in the mail today. And so I thought I would go, I've had the pattern for a few weeks, but I thought I would go ahead and show them now when I got the wood piece. The wood piece shipped like this, which is nice. Um, and I gotta think there's probably, I can probably use the negative to frame something too. I gotta think a little bit about that one. Um, but this is the piece that they've mounted um, the little strawberries and mice on. So the prices were reasonable. I did buy a few pieces from them. I, since I was ordering the mouse, I got um, a couple pieces that I don't have in here with me. But another one that I brought in here is this piece. Um, so this this would be the bottom and see, it's got kind of this uh, overhang here. This is the stand. So this would sit flat on your table and this, this fits in the slot, so then it will stand up like this. And it's kind of a honeycomb shape. And I think that middle section, I'm gonna say is probably about six by six. And since I seem to be going crazy with bee stitching, I don't know what's up with that. Um, I picked it up. And then the other pieces that I picked up weren't as exciting. They had wooden stands like this, but um, one was just a circle and one was like a lacy scallop circle. So they would work nice for some rounds. Um, yeah. So I think that's everything I have for this week. Next time I'm back, I will be, be I will have been to Stitch New Jersey. Really excited about that. Going to get to see um, all the friends that I met last year and some new folks are going this year. My friend Lana, who's Silly Notion Stitcher on Plus Tube, is going. And Candy, from uh, who's the 614 Stitcher, is going. I met her at Stitching in the Wild last year. And um, yeah, I think probably the Boss Stitchers are going again. I need to look on, on their Plus Tube and see if they've mentioned if they're going. And Maureen has already put a message which I need to reply to. Um, so I know she's, I know Maureen is going as well. So it looks to be a fun time. So I'll have lots to fill you in on there, probably some haul, since I don't seem to be able to resist haul. Although with all this fabric that I've been dyeing and fabric that I've bought, I've decided that I really should not be buying any more fabric. I have a good selection in all counts. Um, so I need to just stop looking at fabric because if I look, I can't seem to resist it. Um, so yeah, I, I've got a lifetime supply of fabric. I need to step away from the fabric. I'm thinking maybe when I visit shops, I should just pick up some flosses, like, you know, pick out six general arts that I like. It would be cheaper than picking out fabric, especially if I end up with six fabrics. Anywho, <laughs> that's enough of me rambling for this week. I'm losing my voice. I did cool down though, finally, thank God. I guess it's cooling down for the evening. So everybody stay cool and happy stitching and I'll see you again in two weeks. Bye.